If you have a lighting pole and a path like this in your project, so in this video, I will tell you how to make multiple copies of this lighting pole along this path. Now, here we have this simple spline, and that will simply represent the horizon of our ground in the project. And here we have a lighting pole block. Now, if you want to make multiple copies of this lighting pole along this path, then you can use the path array option. Also, for similar conditions, you can use the path array tool. So when you expand this flyout, you'll see this path array tool here. Now select it and select the object, which is this one. And now, press enter. Now, you need to select the path. And here we have this path, so select it, and here we have it. All the objects are now added along that path. Now, once again, we also have similar options that we have seen in the rectangular and polar array tools. But in this case, there is a slight difference in the number of items. Now, here you'll see that a number of items cannot be changed. Here, it is set to 36 by default. But we can change the distance between the number of items. So, let's now change this distance value to 4000 and press the tab key. So now we are able to change the distance between items. But what if we want to change the number of items? For that, simply go to the Properties panel, select this measure flyout, and change it to Divide. Now, you will see that the number of items can be changed, but the gap between items cannot be changed. So you can keep any of these options active at the time. So if one of the options is active, the second one will automatically become deactivated. So in this case, we have a total number of items of 10. So let's now change it to 8 and press the tab key. Here we have it now. We have a number of rows, which is set to 1, obviously in this case. Also, if you want to add more rows, you can do that. So let's type 3, press the tab key, and here we have it, which is quite confusing in this case. We don't want these many rows, so that will make it look very unnatural. So I'll type 1 again, and here we have it again, the levels that can be added in the Z direction, and we have the associated option. So, as long as you keep this associative option checked, you will be able to modify this array even after making it. But in this case, I'll keep it unchecked. Now again, we have the align items option, and using this align items option, you can align all of these objects, this is according to the geometry of this curve. So here, let's say that we don't want to align these objects. We want the same orientation of this initial object or this primary object for all of our copies of this area. For that, click on this to uncheck. And now, we have all of these objects in the same alignment as the primary object. But if you want to align them according to the geometry, then click on these aligned items, and here we have it. But I will keep all of them at the same orientation of the original object. That looks better. And now I'll close the array. So here we have the final array. Now, if you click on any of these objects, they will be individually selected, and they are no longer a part of an array, because we have not selected the associative option. So, if you want to keep it modifiable or modify these arrays even after making them, ensure that the associative option is checked. So I'll press the escape key, and that's the final array. So, this was all about the Path Array tool of AutoCAD. Thank you, and see you in other videos of the AutoCAD course in English.